Good morning. Welcome. It's Wednesday. Welcome. And our guest is going to rock your world. This is the Metadime channel and you are on the Coffee Break Show. I'm Vicki Helm. I'm so excited to be with Deborah Jason today. I want to let you know, we promised to deliver something to you during this time that we said will help you in the post-pandemic world. If you're if you're looking for all the best marketing skills, you are not going to want to miss this show. Listen, if you're new to the Smart Life Club, uh, I'm sorry, if you're new to the Metadime Digital Channel, I'm sorry, we had a name change right there, Metadime Digital Channel, and you're new to the Coffee Break Show, this is a place where we share tips, tools, techniques. We have a break. We get a cup of coffee. We hang out. We have a conversation and we just have fun. And so every day we go live Monday through Friday. And if you're new here, just put your name down below so that we can get to know you and have some fun with you. And already people are coming in this morning. I just want to say everybody's there, of course. Good morning, Deborah Jason. And again, we're looking here. Great to see your smile smiling face. Yes, it is. Thank you for coming on board. So I want to tell you, if you're here every single day, I want to let you know that today, like every other day, is going to be life-changing. Uh, we have an award-winning, uh, first of all, I want to let you know, um, Deborah Jason's my friend. She's really just absolutely one of the most uplifting and inspiring people. And she has such mm -hmm. talents and gifts. She's a keynote speaker. We've been on stage together. We've talked uh, at uh, several events that we are both at. And she is one of the most engaging speakers that I've ever seen. Uh, and she's amazing at what she can do. But today, she is going to tell you and give you some of the most important skill sets that you're going to need for the future in order to help you grow your business, grow your message, get all kinds of things out to the public. Hi, guys. How you doing? I just want to say hello. Uh, good morning, said Donald. Nice to see you guys on board. I see you guys come Coming on board, do me a favor, put your names over there. Go ahead and make a comment on the side. Join the conversation today that we're going to have uh, because we're going to have so much fun. Now, I want to let you know that um, I, I told you once that I always think about who I put on the show. I don't just put any guest on the show. Today's guest is, uh, yeah, I hope you've got it, Scott Coffee, anybody? You bet. <laughs> okay, so today's show uh, is another person that I thought about. What's the one word? What's the one word that I could use to describe Deborah Jason? I see you guys all flooding on. Thank you very much. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Deborah. Uh, coffee show. That's right. Coffee O show. We got it today. So, Deborah, when I thought about her, because she's so. Um, incredibly inspiring. And what I mean by that, that's the one word inspiring. This, this is a person who is uplifting every morning. She starts the morning saying good morning to everybody on Facebook with her flower pictures, which I love. But if you hear her speak and you hear her messages, she is informal. Uh, thank you guys. I see you all coming on. Good morning. Thanks for being here, everybody. Put your name down over there. Be part of the conversation. And what she shares with everybody is really life-changing. There implementable. I, I'm not sure who this is, but if you go up here, we have, um, we have, uh, it could be Ryan. Ryan, if that's you, say hello. But if not, look for the StreamYard link above you, click it, push the blue button, and that'll let us see your face and your name right now. I see you all coming on board. Thank you for being here. Deborah, I just want to welcome you to the Coffee Break Show today. I'm so excited to have you here. I haven't seen you in a while. And it's, I'm, I'm like, hi, I'm going to catch up with Deborah. Nice to have you on board with us today. Thank well, thank you. you for that amazing introduction, my friend. I mean, I'd like to take that and bottle it and use it somewhere, but it's amazing <laughs> to see you. I'm so happy that you asked me to be on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I'm like... Um, <laughs> I'm, I got so excited. You know, it's like <laughs> we have a really good guest on who's going to really deliver value. And I know she is. So I want to let 
um, everybody know that I have her here and I know how good she is at what she does. And I'm really looking forward to ha answering as many questions as possible. So today, if we're talking and you have a question, put it in the chat box and I will have her get to it as, as quickly as possible. And I want to start right now. And I want to talk about her book. She has a book. And Karen, would you do me a favor? Would you go put this book, uh, um, Millionaire Marketing on a Shoestring bu Budget? Would you go put that in the, put a link in the description? She, this is an award-winning book. This book here is, this book has been on the on the the guide list of every person who is marketing online who does marketing and really is bootstrapping doesn't have a big huge budget but wants effective ways to go ahead and market and today we're going to also be talking about some linkedin secrets is that correct that's what we're going to talk about we can talk about all kinds of things but yeah linkedin right now given what we're going through is important because a lot of people are looking at reinventing themselves or rethinking what they have on their profile and whether it really is showing them in the best light. Yes, yes, that's a big question, isn't it? That's something that we have to be, it's really important to have that now because part of the thing, uh, the protein break show with Vicky doesn't flow, what is that? It's coffee, always coffee break. Mm -hmm. So let's start the conversation today with um, tell it, let's start with the book. Let's say okay. what, let, let's start with, cause I want everybody to know what are you going to get in this book first, three tips, and then let's talk about the power of LinkedIn and, uh, start from there. So the book actually came about after nine 11. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of my clients, I'm a copywriter. I've had my business as a copywriter since 1989. And a lot of my clients were calling and saying, I'm scared, I'm frightened, I'm cutting back on my marketing, I don't want to do anything. And my thought was, this is not the time to cut back. This is the yeah. time you want to stay visible. Because when you stay visible in the tough times, then people remember you in the good times. Yes. So I started to give them feedback on how to market themselves and to do it cost effectively or at no cost. Now, you have to remember, this was before we have this thing called the internet and social media marketing. So um, it's, it's everything I did when I started my business Brilliant. and that I continue to do. So one of the, I say that one of the most fun ways to market yourself uh, without a hardcore sales pitch, okay, is to speak, yeah. okay? Yeah. Now, of course, right now you can't, be doing in-person presentations, but there's so much that's happening online. So think about what is your area of expertise and what can you share? Maybe yeah. it's yeah. something about, you know, your success tips for being in business. Maybe it's about marketing tips that you have. Maybe it's about LinkedIn. Maybe it's about Facebook advertising. So what can you share with your audience that has value? and go out there and speak about it because that helps you build visibility and credibility and your authority. So speaking is one of my favorite tips to tell people to go out there and it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we might want to put in a headset. We got some feedback there. Um, but uh, yes, you are a very, very good keynote speaker. And I say that because I have 20 years experience and I've watched people on stage uh, every time I go and you are just absolutely excellent at it. I want to go back to the beginning here because I think it's really interesting for uh, you what you just uh, one of the things that you just said, uh, okay. one of the things that you said was you wrote the book uh, after 9-11 and that what happened was one of your clients wanted to cut back and you were like, no, now's the time to be out there. Now's the time to absolutely give it your best because they will remember you when, in the, when you were with them in the bad times. Now, I think that's an extraordinary piece of advice and I want everybody listening to really breathe that in because that's what's happening. Most people are abandoning at the ship. They're abandoning their ship. And what happens is when you step up your game during this time, 
then stepping up your game online to be with them, to know that you're rising with them, that you understand them. That is a key component of being able to make it through the other side. And I thought that was so brilliantly said. And I'm wondering maybe if you had, uh, and I want to let you know, I, I have no scripted questions. I never said, hey, I'm going to ask you this, and then I'm going to ask you this. Uh-uh, this, this is, is improv. <laughs> this is when expertise flows. Uh, thank you. We like that. Gene, how you doing? It's great to see you, bud. So what happens here is that I want to ask you, if you, if you were talking to a client right now and they had an online presence, what would you advise them to do to help them be with their clients? What would you advise them to have uh, in place for a little bit to show their you know, allegiance with or loyalty to? So right now, it's awesome that you likened this to a ship because one of the blog posts I wrote recently is called Marketing in Turbulent Times, Don't Give Up the Ship. Yes. So if you were sitting across from me and you were my client, I would say, okay, how about being a guest on a podcast, <laughs> being a guest on a webinar? You know, I, it could be an interview like this. It could be something I've been a guest where I've done a whole presentation with PowerPoints and everything. Yep. But then you don't just leave it there. You take tips that you presented in that podcast or in that webinar and you share them on whatever social media channels you're on. You can yep. create memes about them. You can also write articles about them, put them on your blog. For example, the post I put on my blog about marketing in turbulent times um, I reached out to a trade organization where I had spoken at their conference and they're going to publish it in their digital magazine. Nice. Nice. Uh, you know, I reached out to a local business publication and they're going to put it in their newspaper. So those are ways that I'm staying visible that are easy for other people to do as well. And you, you know, can look at um, just to quickly mention yeah. this. It's called the radio guest list. If you go online. Yeah. And you can find opportunities to be a guest on somebody's show. Brilliant. Thank you for that. I, I really enjoy that. You said something that I think is super key. And the key about it is reaching out. So often we, we try to wait till somebody reaches to us and reaching out is a marketing skill set in and of itself, in my opinion. Uh, I like this. It's like investing in real estate when the market's down. That's the time you do it. Do it. Thank you. And I so agree with that. <laughs> that. So do me a favor. To, let's talk about, um, let, wait, I just have, I want to talk about LinkedIn. I'm so excited because I have you here and I'm like, we could talk about this. And let's this get and it this. all in. <laughs> I know, let's get it all in right now uh, to delivering value. One of the things that you just said that I thought was really key is when you have a blog, you have some place or some form or something, some way to keep connected with your clients and to tell me what is some of the best ways that a business can use or a solopreneur, whatever it is, what tools can they use right now that you say, here's the top three tools to keep in contact with your, uh, with your clients. Clients? And why? Well, or or one. business. Well, one yeah. is email. Yeah. So for example, when I wrote that blog about marketing in turbulent times, I sent out an email to my list and said, go check out this blog post. You know, if you're concerned about how to keep your message out there, do that. So email is one way. A LinkedIn is another way. And there's two things you could do on LinkedIn. One is just post a little update. Okay. What they call an update, which is shorter or write an article on LinkedIn. So when you write on LinkedIn, and some people say, well, I don't have a blog, but if you have a LinkedIn profile, it's mm. like a blog, but it sits on your LinkedIn profile. Beautiful. So go in there and you can put in an image and you put in a headline and you can write the post and then put in a byline that tells people a little bit more about you. So post it on LinkedIn. Beautiful. Um, those are, you know, just some simple ways. They don't cost you any money. And then, like you just said, reach out to people. So if you don't ASK, you don't G-E-T. So yeah. I didn't get, you know, I didn't get into these two publications because they called me. I got into them. And here's a good story about LinkedIn. 
I had reached out to the business publication that's here in Boulder and I hadn't heard from them. On LinkedIn, I saw a mutual colleague post something and people were commenting and the editor from the newspaper commented. So I made a comment to him and then he commented back. And then I messaged him and said, you know, I sent you an email about this article. And he's like, oh, let me go check my email. And then he responded and said, yeah, let's run that article. Send me your headshot. Fantastic. So that's one of the values of LinkedIn. <laughs> that's br that's brilliant right there. You know, sometimes uh, people the people are so afraid to to step out and ask to GET. And the thing that you uh, put up here, there's a couple of keywords that I'm getting from Deborah Jason. One is reach out, ask, reach out and ask ask. That is such a powerful statement. I think that's the first key thing in marketing. So many people, uh, and I, I got, I got to tell you, I reached out and asked yesterday. It was a pretty big ask of someone and I made this proposal and everything else. And it was beautifully done. And when it got to getting the email, I suddenly froze and I thought, I'm not sure how to sculpt that email so that it, it makes sense. And all of a sudden I had brain freeze for a moment and I had to really walk that off. And what the truth was for me was I was nervous. The proposal is the easy part because you're not really, there's nobody there. You're <laughs> writing the proposal. And when it comes to the point where there's actually the reaching out, the actual action of connecting with someone, then I had that kind of freeze, that kind of fear that came up. And I was like, oh, I see. All right. You're afraid to ask. How do you get over three things, tips? How do you how, how do you, you get over that? Well, sometimes you don't. And as you were talking about that, what came up for me is um, I'm going to be a little vulnerable here because like you, there are times as a speaker in particular where I want to reach out to someone about speaking at their conference and I get afraid because I'm afraid they're going to say no. That's right. That's and, the big you part. know. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen is they say no, yeah. but if you reach out, they might say yes. Yeah. So my, my philosophy on it, and I, again, I'm not always great at it because if I get too many no's, then I take it really personally. But my advice is to be consistent and persistent. So one yeah. positive example that happened to me, and this was a couple of years ago, a gentleman from Remax, I really wanted to speak at Remax. Um, <laughs> I kept reaching out to him. He came and he heard me speak and then he said he was interested. And so I followed up with an email and it turned out he wasn't the decision maker. So he had to give my name to somebody else. And then I followed up again and I kept following up. And after a while, I said, you know, nothing was happening. I sent him a message and I said, I'm sorry, I don't want to be a nudge. You know, so <laughs> if, if, you, if you're not interested anymore, that's OK, but just tell me. Yeah. But otherwise, if you're still interested, let me know. And he said, Deborah, thank you so much for being persistent. And I was like, whoa, OK, <laughs> it works. As opposed to another time, I reached out to an organization and I'd already spoken there, but they had a changing of the guard and there was a new person there. And so I was staying in touch and I do a variety of things. I email, um, sometimes I call, sometimes I'll send a card. You know, and I don't pitch like so I'll send a card saying Happy New Year, Happy Fourth of July. Well, at the holidays, I sent this woman a card and it came back undeliverable. So I went online to say, did I have the wrong address? And nobody responded. So I called the organization and said, you know, I sent this. Um, is she no longer there? And they said, oh, no, she's still here. She doesn't want to hear from you. Whoa. And I'm like, wait, this was just a Christmas card. You know, it was a holiday greeting and she sent it back. That really, that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, so I stopped communicating with her. But, you know, I think there could have been a nicer way for her to tell me, Deborah, yes. we're not interested. You so know, be aware you're going to get rejection. It happens. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be fun rejection as well. And I got to tell you, if you're if you're any if you're anyone who's willing to be out there and make a difference in the world, you're going to take a few hits. 
full stop. You're going to have a few moments in there where, you know, you know, something could make a difference in the world and you reach out and maybe you get that no. And it's just a gracious no. Thank you. Maybe yeah. you get that. Yes. And oh my gosh, it feels so great to get that. Yes. And maybe you have somebody that's going to troll you or be rude to you or lie to you. Stuff is going to happen. The thing is, the power that you feel of being able to ask and being able to take the vulnerability piece is so empowering to do. It's so empowering. Now, we ask in a polite way, whether it, no matter what we ask in a polite way, we ask in a courteous way and we always drop value. And I think you guys know that. But today, right now, I want to head up and talk about LinkedIn. Are you guys okay with that? We're going to switch because the power of LinkedIn is her expertise. And I don't want you to miss this part. <laughs> um, but she has, this is what I'm telling you. That's why I sat down. We could talk for three hours, four hours, and, you know, just get all these diamond stuff from her. She's really that good. And so what I want to say is, Tell me why you like LinkedIn first. Let's just hear, why do you like yeah, LinkedIn? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I just want to put this up. But Reaching out and ask is very important. In my days, we called in proactive marketing. Most of my leads in the past 30 years have come from reaching out and asking. Thank you, that is so true. Um, I like this, but this is the vulnerability piece. Not everything is a good fit for everybody. I like this one. Some will, some won't, oh, so what? Oh, what? Someone's waiting. Yes. Very good. Thank you guys for that. So tell me, what is so wonderful about LinkedIn? Why do you like it? Why is it important? So LinkedIn is important. One, you know, more and more these days, people are going online and searching for you before they ever meet you. Mm -hmm. So whether they're going to be listening to you online or in the days before COVID, going to a conference, They'll search for you. And so you're in a position to win or lose based on what they find on your LinkedIn profile and your activity there. Okay, So that's really important. And what I love about LinkedIn is that it's about building and nurturing relationships. And so I'm a connector. So yeah. what I want people to remember who are watching is that it's not about going in there and pitching at least not to begin with, okay? So I tell people, ditch the pitch. That's my saying. You go on to LinkedIn to build and nurture relationships, to have conversations. I just gave you an example of a conversation that happened on LinkedIn, and it's leading to me having an article in a business publication. So it's about building those relationships so that then people get to know you, like you, trust you. Yes. The good old KLT factor. Yes. So for those who have read Bob Berg and John David Mann, the Go-Giver series, you know, they say all things being equal, people do business with and refer business to the people they know, like, and trust. And LinkedIn gives you the opportunity to do that, to build and nurture that KLT factor. Yes, I, I think that's so beautiful what you just said because it's so important. We always talk about having a servant leader, a servant leader. What about a servant marketer? What, what, what about the theory of having a servant marketer that actually believes the relationship building piece of that marketing skill is the most important. And so, you know, that's, uh, the power of that is so important. She said earlier, she said, well, I email my email list. That's like, those are the connections that you make over time that you continue to be a servant marketer and a servant leader to them. And on LinkedIn, she said, the, the, the first place they're going to go, probably Facebook and LinkedIn to look you up and see who you are. And tell me, what kinds of things should they have on their LinkedIn profile to oh. help you? Find out how, how do you how do you get that correct? This is going to be this is a three hour workshop that I do. So really important thing on LinkedIn, and a lot of people do this. They put up a profile, but they don't really put up what we call a robust and optimized profile. They throw up a picture, maybe they put in their job title, and then they go, "Nothing's happening on LinkedIn. Why?" So the most important thing when you get on LinkedIn is to create a complete profile. What I mean by complete is you have one, a professional photo. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a professional photographer. 
It just mm. means you have to have a nice backdrop, not yeah. no sunglasses on, no puppy photos unless you're a dog groomer. You know, <laughs> not skiing. It's not Facebook. So have a professional image in your photo. Now, the other thing is LinkedIn gives you what's called a background banner. And many people, I call it the constellation image. If you go into someone's profile and there's the blue image behind them, that is valuable, valuable real estate. So put an image there, but don't just put an image. Superimpose your website link, which is not live, but at least they see it. Your email, your, however you want to be contacted. Yes. So use Canva, C-A-N-V-A, canva.com, and you can go in and create that banner. So when someone goes to your profile, it's really easy right away for them to see how to contact you without them having to click the contact button. Again, it's not live, but they see it as soon as they get to the profile. Now, yeah. I want you all to have a pen and paper nearby because. Okay, this is the writer downer. <laughs> writer downer. One thing, it's actually sort of six things in a way, but LinkedIn like Google is a search engine. So you need to optimize your profile for keyword phrases. Mm. Many people go into their profile and I did this when I first started my LinkedIn profile and they put down under their professional headline, which is right under your name. Okay. They put owner of the right direction, which is my company. Owner is not a keyword phrase unless I'm looking for an adventure capital, you know, a venture capital firm or an angel investor. Go in and create a professional headline that shares a little bit about you, like a tagline or a positioning statement, and then what you do. So, for example, mine is marketing and writing with heart, not hype. But then I also have LinkedIn marketing and marketing speaker and copywriting services, because those are all keyword phrases for me. You have 120 characters. So you can use all 120 characters and don't just, you know, if your company is not well known, like the right direction, which is W-R-I-T, was not that well known as opposed to somebody like a Remax. So having that in your professional headline really doesn't help you because whenever you post something on LinkedIn, that kind of pops up your headline. So put keyword phrases in your professional headline, but this is not about stuffing. So I was going to say the keywords go in six places. The first place is your professional headline. The next place is what's called your summary or your about section. Okay. Now, in this section, you have 2,000 characters. Please, please, please do not go in and write one really, 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 really long paragraph because nobody's going to read that. But what you want to put in there is you want to share a little bit about who you are, but then how do you help people? Okay. Yeah. So one of my clients, I do one-on-one -on -one LinkedIn consultations where we sit down for two hours and she um, had survived a health crisis and she almost died. So she puts in her profile that she almost, you know, I survived a health crisis and almost lost my life. So now what I do is I empower others on wellness strategies and how to develop and keep a good work-life balance. So work-life balance is a keyword phrase for her. Wellness is a keyword phrase. But she shared a little bit about her story and then how she helps other people. So go into your summary, write 2,000 characters if you want to use them all, but do short paragraphs. You can do subheadings. You can do bullet points, but not just bullet points. You want it to be conversational and you put keywords in there. So we have your professional headline and your summary, which now LinkedIn is calling the about section. Then the next place for your keyword phrases is your current experience. So many people go in there and you have a job title. You can put keywords in that job title. And then many people don't even fill out the description of their job. Go in and put a description and use keywords in there. Keep in mind, your summary is a little bit about you and how you help people. Your job description is what you achieved at that job, what you accomplished at that job. Don't just repeat the same thing. Okay. So that's the third place. Then you have your past experience. So same thing, your job description for your past experience and the actual description. So your job title and the description. LinkedIn likes you to have at least two jobs in there. Now, some people say to me, oh, but my two jobs are totally unrelated. Should I really put it in there? So I want to give you an example of a client. We sat down and looked at his profile. 
He was currently in the relocation business. Mm. Now, but in the past, he was in the hospitality business. So he's like, how are those two related? So we talked about it. Well, in the relocation business, his job was moving people in corporate. So if you lived in New York and worked for IBM and you were coming to Boulder to work for IBM. So mm -hmm. his job was customer service. His oh. job in hospitality was customer service. So customer service was the common keyword phrase. So okay. take a look at what you're doing and see if that fits. So we have your professional headline, your summary, your current experience, your past experience. The next place for keyword phrases are in your skills section. Okay. So under skills, you can have 50 of them in there. I don't always recommend that you stuff 50 things in there because when someone gets to your profile, they're only going to see three. They can click on a button to see more, but initially they'll only see three. And you can put whichever three you want up there. You can drag and drop them. So use keyword phrases. So if you're a realtor, realtor is not a great keyword phrase because how many realtors are there probably on LinkedIn? Lots. So how mm -hmm. about realtor, first time, especially in first time home buyers, realtor in Boulder County, realtor in wherever you live. So think about keyword phrases. Think about what would someone search if they don't know you, they don't know your name, they don't know your business, what would they be looking for? So those are five places. The sixth place is some place that most people don't even think of, and that is LinkedIn gives you three website links. So in the contact section of your profile, you can insert three website links. You can go in there and LinkedIn gives you a drop down saying, is this a personal link, a company blog? Don't use any of those drop down uh, autofills. Use other. When you hit other, you can put a keyword phrase in there. And for those of you who go, well, I only have one website, so that's only one link. No, you have one website, but it probably has more than three pages. So take them to your homepage. I take people to, um, so I have several websites. One is rightdirection.com, W-R-I-T-E. So I take them there and I say, look at my copywriting portfolio because copywriting is a keyword phrase. Then I have a speaking website, which is debrajason.com. And the keywords that I put in the other field are hire me to speak at your event or I think hire me to speak about marketing or something like that. The third one is for my book, Millionaire Marketing on a Shoestring Budget. So Millionaire Marketing, marketing is in there. So I put that in the phrase. So those are six places. I don't know which way to put. There we go. Six we places go. <laughs> to put keyword phrases in your LinkedIn profile. So that if someone is searching on LinkedIn, then they can find you. But it's not just that. There's so many other pieces to LinkedIn that help you show up when somebody searches for you. So I feel like I'm talking nonstop. So. Yeah, but that was so value packed right now. We, we have a question right here from Scott. And I want to go over it because uh, this is what I thought too. And I'm learning today from you. That's not true. It says LinkedIn is my most neglected platform. And uh, if I'm not job hunting, so why invest in it? And this is very interesting because I've always thought it was a job hunting platform. And since I'm a business owner, then I don't use it. And, and it's like, okay, <clears throat> is it a job hunting platform? Is it for business owners? Uh, great question, Scott. And let's see what she has to uh, okay. ask about. So, Scott, it started out that way, you know, and many people just threw up a resume, but it's so much more than a resume because professionals are engaging on LinkedIn on a regular basis, okay, and more so now than before. And so this gives you the opportunity, if, even if you're not looking for a job, you to demonstrate to other people that you're an industry expert and that you're a trusted advisor. Um, it's a way for you to build thought leadership by being a voice in your industry, sharing information that's of value, posting articles, um, updates. It allows you to enable deeper engagement with your community. Um, and again, as we mentioned earlier, it helps to strengthen that know, like, and trust factor. Okay, so it's so much more. 73, approximately 73% 73 of the people who are on LinkedIn use it for networking. Wow. Okay? So one thing I tell people is don't go on there thinking, one, that it's just about finding a job, or two, that it's about finding clients, okay? Because, yes, it can become that, but 
think of it more as about building relationships because it goes back to if you build that relationship, that person may not become a client, but they might refer you. Yes. Yes. That happens a lot. um, One good example I have is a gentleman who went on LinkedIn and connected with a former colleague. Okay, they hadn't been in touch in a while. They started to have a conversation. That colleague referred, this person was a financial advisor. The colleague referred his new friend, you know, his refound friend to somebody. That somebody hired him to be his financial advisor, and it was a $70 million retail account. Nice. So that first connection wasn't about client, you know, a new client. It was a referral to a client. So, Scott, if you're out there, you can receive and LinkedIn. This is a a statistic from LinkedIn. If you have a complete and robust profile, you can receive up to 40 times more opportunities through the network. Wow. So I, you know, a complete and robust profile means you're filling out all the fields. You're not just putting up a picture and a title. You're not just putting in a title and no job description. You're not including a summary. So all those things are really important in creating that robust profile. And then you have to do something really important, which is engage. And the reason I show you this is this is my mother's engagement ring. So when you're on LinkedIn, it's like joining a chamber of commerce or any association. You don't just pay your dues and sit back and go, okay, what are you doing for me? You have to get engaged. You have to get involved. So that means for many of you who are on Facebook, you know what it means to like and comment and share. You do the same thing on LinkedIn. Beautiful. Thank you. This is so important because uh, I realize there's a lot. I'm not the only one confused about uh, 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 LinkedIn. It's a stumbling block for me. I I get requests all the time for connections, but I never go there. Looks like I need to make some serious changes. Yes. Do you know how they say if you're, you're leaving money on the table and you're thinking, well, how am I leaving money on the table? This is an example of that. Now, when you you start using the power of things, using it correctly, you can always, always create more connections and more relationships. This is the point of LinkedIn. And first, I want to say, look, it's it's over the hour. Is it okay if we go on for a little bit longer? Are you okay with that? Great. Thank you. Because there is so many people. I I thought this too. Karen says 70% of the people using LinkedIn for networking. Who knew? People are very excited about that statistic because they're saying, I didn't think of that that way. Now, do you see how we're underutilizing this? This is the power. Now, I want to let you know, everybody who comes on this show gives so freely and so wonderfully. I mean, these are workshops that she does. These are things that she helps professionals do. These are things that uh, we can utilize right now. And she's just generously, generously shared it with you for no reason at all, except that she and I are friends. Now, I really love that kind of friendship. Uh, But I want to let you know that LinkedIn is one of the most, I think, underutilized tools. And I'm guilty of that as well. I am very guilty of that as well. Because I keep I keep noticing that if we we label it as a job getting tool instead mm-hmm. of a networking tool. And I think her marketing expertise is that she uses it as a networking tool. Now um how would you approach a new um, like if you wanted to meet somebody, you know how they do that Kevin Bacon thing. There's only <laughs> you know, six between because right, right away when you're, how do we get to the, it's a lot of people see it as a, how do I get to the gate past the gatekeeper kind of tool? And let's say you really want to create a relationship with um, maybe not an influencer, but somebody that's an influencer in your industry, Mm -hmm. not a celebrity influencer. But uh, what happens if we go ahead and we have um, we have some expertise that we know we could maybe join venture or network with somebody. How would you approach getting to meet them in your network on LinkedIn and things like that? Well, here's a good example. There was a gentleman who's um, an author and he wanted to speak at a writer's conference. And so he went on LinkedIn and found the director of the writer's conference (laughs) and messaged him. But he didn't message him and say, 
hi, Vicky, I want to speak at your conference, hire me. He messaged him and said, hi, Vicky, I see that you're the director of the ABC conference. Um, I'd like to stay connected with you, but here's another point. First, go look at someone's profile. Is there anything in their profile that you have in common with them? Maybe you went to the same university and you don't know it. Talking about the six degrees of separation. Um, yeah. Maybe they have an interest that they posted, like they love salsa dancing and so do you. So if there's something like that, pull that out and say, I see that you're into salsa dancing or that you know you were at the same conference or you went to the same university. I'd love to stay in touch with you. Then you wait and see if they respond, you know, and they might respond just by accepting your invitation. If they do, please, your next message, ditch the pitch. Okay. And the yeah. next message is not going, okay, now that we're connected, I really wanted to say that you should hire me. No. Okay. Share value. Say, oh, I see that, you know, you posted something about, or go and see what they're posting and comment on their posts or like their posts or share their posts. Okay. Mm. So then you're staying top of mind with them. Okay, they're saying, oh, this Vicky keeps showing up. It's like me going into that post and commenting on someone else's, and I ended up speaking with the editor. So use it in a smart and savvy way. The, uh, the author who got in touch with this director of the conference eventually did get asked to be on the faculty of that conference. Okay. But it just doesn't happen as soon as you send out that invite. Somebody messaged in the comments you posted, you know, that they get a lot of invites. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of points I want to touch on there because most often I bet you people in the room would say, oh, I get invites from people I don't know. Yes. And so what do I do? Should I ignore them? I, most of the time I do. So myself and you may know Vivica von Rosen, who's a, also a LinkedIn speaker. So you have to be sensible about it. My recommendation is don't accept the invitation. Don't ignore it. Go look at that person's profile. Do you have anyone in common? Do you have any interests in common? Is there anything that makes you say, oh, this could maybe be a good partner, a resource partner, an affiliate partner, a client, whatever, all of the above, a gatekeeper? Yeah. So then I don't, I, at that point, I still say don't accept. I say go back to the invitation. Okay. And when you go into my network and you see your invitations, you can send that person a message without connecting yet and say, this is what I do, especially when I don't know them or I don't recognize them. And this is about starting a conversation. I say, Vicki, thanks so much for reaching out on LinkedIn, but I'm curious, were you referred to me or were you simply searching LinkedIn? It helps me to know how people connect with me. I look forward to hearing from you. Even told you what to say on that one. That was mm, <laughs> what a great gem that was. Hey, I want to ask you, because I, I noticed right now you have a freebie for the people that are on here. Yes, and I'm I put this at writingdirection.com, LinkedIn. Do you mind if I share it with everybody? Oh, yeah, I put it in there. I didn't know how to get it into the chat box. So, that's yes, okay. Oh, yeah, sure. she, has, she has a free gift for everybody. And I, I really, th that's gracious. Yeah, you've done so much and you guys are speaking. Um, let's see. I'm going to put it in here. Give me a second. And tell me, um, uh, you guys, I see so many of you. I put it in there. It's in there twice. It is uh, from Metadyme Media. I look for the little Metadyme Media ball. It's right there. I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it right there. Writingdirections.com, LinkedIn, 10 point checklist. Uh, this is, thank you for this, by the way. Sure. This. I didn't ask her for the free gift. This is just, this is just love right here. And so everybody, please go get that. And this is, yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I love, Ooh, I love free stuff. <laughs> Me too. Anyway, this is sharing it that way. And you can go ahead and utilize LinkedIn on these things. Deborah, tell me if somebody wanted to be involved with you, how would they get a hold of you? What would they do? You know, where do they go? If they say, man, I, I want to work with that, Deborah, how is that done? So they can reach me. The best way is through my email, which is Deborah, D E B R A, at rightdirection.com, W R I T E, rightdirection.com. That's so cute. But you can, of course, find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram. But if you want to work with me one on one, and 
Vicki, let me know. I hope this is okay. If you want to work with me one on one, I do a two hour consultation. It's usually $400. If you tell me you were listening today, I will offer it to you for $250. And we will get online by Skype and look at your profile. See, are you using keyword phrases? What do you need to fix or change? What questions do you have? What engagement strategies are you using? So I will make that offer available Thank to you. you. But um, what I will say is get a hold of me within the next week to make a commitment to that because the best time to do it is while it's fresh in your mind. So that's right. Reach out and uh, we can talk about that some more. You know, it's so interesting that we look at somehow, for some reason, we don't see all the gems in front of us that are ways to market that are absolutely powerful organic strategies. Like everybody thinks, well, make the product, get a Facebook ad, throw it up there and just throw a lot of money. So you're throwing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just getting the Facebook ad that's right and can convert. And by the time you spend that uh, specialty, we're like, okay, here's $250. We'll go get these things correct. We go ahead and do this. Organic traffic is so much stronger when you have the relationship and the connection and the, she's like a robust, a robust profile, 40% more. Now I have never seen a Facebook ad that will, you know, convert at 40% more than it's last. It's not. These are tools that you can do now that last forever. They help you grow organically. And I've, I've done both paid. I do both paid ads and organic. I love organic traffic. Is it a little bit more work? Yes. Is it a little bit more, you know, time consuming? Yes. But the relationship last longer than that one off sale. The relationship builders that you can put in with the LinkedIn profiles and things like that, all of those things that you can do, it's like networking online has taken a new form. So in the LinkedIn, in the LinkedIn channel right now, if you work with Deborah Jason, I, I can't tell you enough. I adore her. Uh, so much fun. So, so class act. Thank you. And a really good copywriter. Um, and since I'm a copywriter, uh, and I say that she's a really good copywriter. I mean it, she's a really good copywriter. She's got a lot going on and there is a lot of, you know, thank you, Deborah's from people coming in. I love free stuff. Thank you guys. That's great. <laughs> and I want to say, uh, you can contact Deborah at this address right here. And you want to do it within the next seven days because it's a top of mind. If you get to the point at the end of seven days, I don't know. She doesn't have to give you that deal. That price can go right back up. So uh, do me a favor and just ask if you guys have one more question, because I'm only keeping her a little bit. She's gone way <laughs> over time today. Well, I want to make one there. point before we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, for those of you who want to reach out to me on LinkedIn, Here's a very important point, not just about reaching out to me, but to anybody. When you want to reach out to someone on LinkedIn and you want to connect with them, go to their profile first. And this is on your computer, on your desktop or your laptop. It's different on your phone or your iPad. And send them a personalized request, okay? Don't just hit the connect button. If you go to their profile first and you hit connect, you'll get a box that says you're likely to get your invitation accepted if you write a personal note. Cool. So write a personal note and say, I was listening to you on Vicky's show, Deborah. I'd like to stay in touch with you. Okay? Brilliant. Um, if you're doing it on a phone or a tablet, it's a little bit different. You go to someone's profile, but you do not hit connect. There's a little button that says more with three dots. And when you hit that button, you'll get a drop down menu. And then it says personalize your invite. Wow. So it's always a, for those of you who get those invitations and you go, I don't know who this is, chances yeah. are they didn't write a personal note. Mm. Okay? So always personalize that invitation. And it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be long, just short, you know. So that's how you do it on LinkedIn when you want to connect with somebody. Really important. I am um, absolutely honored. I'm absolutely blown away by how much value you delivered. And it's so generous of you to do this for us. I think in the 
the world where people are learning that they're going to have to go back to organic methods of reaching out and connecting, just organic methods in your life. You are an expert, expert at that uh, particular field. Get her book, get in touch with her, get her program. Deborah, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, I really thank appreciate you for it. having me. Like my I can't hug. wait till we can see each other and hug again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't wait for that. All right, you guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out. I love you all. See you later, guys. Bye.